All right, we are back, and uh, we are being joined by our first guest of the evening. She is newly signed Bellator women's featherweight Amber Lybrock. You know, Amber, it's been a little bit time since she's been in the cage. I think, uh, what was it, September 23rd, 2016, the last time that, uh, that you were in there? Yeah. It's been about a year. It's been It's been quite some time. Now, you know, it's been a while since we also had you on here. A lot of things have changed both, uh, you know, uh, personally, professionally. You know, been a while since anyone heard from you. What, what What's going on now? What, uh, what, uh, what forced uh, all these changes and uh, what, what's been on your mind, man? Um, well, you know, after my fight with Invicta, I was feeling really, really good and, um, it was a good way for me to start my um, my transition into the new team. Um, a few months before I fought Amy Coleman, I had just joined CSA, Combat Sports Academy, over in Dublin. And um, it was a good way for me to kind of, you know, it was like a break breakout fight for me to, to feel a part of the team and kind of, you know, um, get more connected with Coach Kieran and stuff. And ever since then, I've just been training, like nonstop training, um, and, and, you know, kind of getting more used to training with such high-level elite athletes like I am now. Uh, now, is the just the gym change the, the biggest thing biggest thing that, that's happened uh, over, over the last year or so, or has there been a, a well, few the, other things? There's been a few other things. I recently just signed a multi-fight contract with Bellator, and I think that that's probably one of the newest, most biggest things that I've done this last year. Um, I am no longer with Invicta, and now I'm with Bellator, which I'm really, really excited about. I've been waiting for, like, my big opportunity to kind of, you know, break out to the world, and I think that this is it. Now, I've got to ask you, you know, you know, you know, obviously, you know, everyone loves Invicta, you know, when, you know, obviously you said, you know, you were feeling really good about everything, you know, being with them. What kind of force, the ch- was there a, a ch- the, f- the change forced or was this a, a, just an opportunity? You know, your your contract expired, the altar came in with an offer, and it was just something you couldn't ignore, or w- was there just, you know, you kind of felt that, there, you were, you know, kind of dragging your feet there uh, with everything that was going going on with, uh, you know, how uh, Invicta was uh, promoting that featherweight division. Well, hmm. I I love what Shannon had did for me. You know, what Invicta did for me, they really gave me my start. They gave me my platform, and they do it for a lot of people. You know, they do it for a lot of up and coming fighters. Unfortunately, right now for the division I'm in, it's like. I feel like nobody's really taking it as seriously as they could. And um, Bellator offered me a really good opportunity to kind of, you know, help build the featherweight division. But with Bellator, Bellator has a lot of featherweights on their roster. And I just felt that it was time for me to kind of take a leap of faith, um, take some risks, and and jump, you know, head first into this really big organization um, to try to build my career and fight more, you know. Um, Invicta, they don't have a lot of fights for featherweights. And so I kind of just, I just felt like maybe I kind of needed a change, you know. I needed to try to do a little bit something more so I can get myself out there, get more fights, and really start to make a name for myself in the featherweight division. So it was probably more being being more active versus you know not liking what really Invicta was doing. Is, is that a fair assessment? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's a complete fair assessment. Like it was never anything against Invicta. I think what Invicta is doing is great. You know, they are really giving a lot of fighters the platform and women fighters at that, the platform to just shine and, you know, really start their careers. But for me, being a featherweight, I, I want to be active. You know, I want to go down as one of the best featherweights in the world, and I can't do that if I'm not fighting. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Carrie, you want to uh, yeah. you wanna jump in here and, and have some questions for Amber? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, that, that's huge, you know, going going to uh, Bellator. That's, that's gigantic. Congratulations on that. 
Um, Thank you. How, how – how amazing is it right now with how big uh, women's MMA is and, uh, you know, how, how, how big it's becoming to, to be in it right now? How, how great is that? I think that this is the best time. I think that I entered women's fighting at a perfect time, you know, and um, I just feel honored and blessed to be one of the women's fighters that's kind of, you know, coming up coming up in the ranks and kind of trying to make it a name for herself. And I just think that right now is the time for women to kind of take over the fighting world. And I'm extremely excited and happy to be a part of that. That's awesome. It really, really, really is an exciting time. And uh, who, what, 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 what women fighters do you train with? Um, right now I train with Alexis Davis. I train with Sarah Diallo. I train with both Frosto sisters, um, Zoila Frosto and Stephanie Frosto. I train with uh, Jenna Fabian is a new fighter to our gym. Um, I train with Candace Mitchell. I train with a whole bunch of new amateurs coming up in the ranks. I just train with probably some of the best women fighters in the world, and I'm so blessed to be a part of them. That is really, really great. Yeah, because I, 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 I've seen, you know, a lot about you, and you've, you know, fought some really, really great people, and, you know, so I can only imagine that you must train with some amazing people. Um, yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love the team I'm with. I love, I think that over at CSA, we probably have one of the hardest, most toughest female crew of fighters and we're only getting bigger and we come in that gym every day just to help each other get better and it's really awesome to be a part of so many great females in in the sport Uh, I just can't wait for that division to really take off too because I I just think it's you know for as much as people like to talk like oh you know you know, there isn't really a lot of featherweights out there. I think there is. You just, just the problem is, is that they're spread all over the place. That you can't get them consolidated yeah. all into into one place. It, it's not like that. You know, you grow top flight. Uh, you know, you know, women's featherweight uh, talent on, on trees. It's, it, it, it's either you have the gift or you don't. And and uh, yeah. I think for where you're at right now, it's the best. It's the best possible scenario for you to test yourself with what, what they're doing, especially the fact of w- what Scott Coker is doing with Del Toro as a whole. Let, let's, let's not just talk about what he's doing with the women, just w- what he's doing with them as a whole, I think is, is, uh, is pretty fun. I was, you know, I know a lot of people were, were, were bagging on the, uh, on the pay-per-view for, for Bell Tour 180, but in my opinion, those were, you know, regardless of, if you felt you knew the outcome or how it was going to happen, you were legit excited about the matchups and interested to see what happened, regardless if, you know, oh, I knew Matt Mitrion was gonna was gonna blow him out, or oh, we knew Chael were, was gonna were, was gonna you know be on top of of uh, Vanderlei like like a blanket. But here's the thing: yeah. at, at the end of the day, what they're doing about how they're going about promoting the fights, how they're putting everything together, how you know you know it, it's, I think it's it's. He has a better version of what he had in Strike Force with, with more funds and unlimited PR. I mean, I think what Bellator is doing is great, and I think it's exactly what the fighting world needs. You know, he's still keeping it pure fighting. You know, it's not just about the entertainment value. You know, like he's following the rankings. Like, you know, one number, the first seat fighting the second seat. Like. I mean, he's just, he's got it all figured out and what he's doing for Bellator, not just for MMA, but for kickboxing and, you know, kind of, you know, bringing the, the Muay Thai feel and the kickboxing, like, back, live, popular. Um, he's got a great thing going on over there, and I'm really excited to be a part of that company, and I really can't wait to just make my first fight with them. Oh, yeah, I... I... Already after after uh, after that event, I, I absolutely before, before either one of them goes goes too far into it, I want to uh, I, I want to see Heather Hardy and Carrie Melendez in an MMA fight, not 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 in a boxing yeah. ring, not not one of their kickboxing. Fight. I want to see them in an MMA fight. I mean, we already know who uh, what, what 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 Carrie is and uh, and who she trains with and all that and. You know, yes, you know, Heather has a lot of things that she kind of needs to grow with to, to get at, better as a mixed martial artist that 
she might be it might be good for her to you know wait a couple fights to have that happen but it has to happen yeah it has to i mean yeah, that, no. that's it one of the it, it follows the idea of what they're what they're looking for on what what, what their business platform and how they go about make, making matchups. But what you were just saying, I, I, I have to dis, I disagree with one thing because I hear a lot of rumblings that King Mo and Ryan Bader is going to be the next light heavyweight title fight, and that's absolute BS. That's Linton Vassell's title shot. He, he, he not only beat uh, the former champion, Liam McGarry, but he finished him being the first man to do so while all Phil Davis did was, was right on top of him for – for for the better part of twenty five minutes, as much as I, yeah. I I got nothing but love and respect for King Mo, and he's definitely one of those guys that are at the top of that. He probably needs another win uh, over you know one of those uh, one of those highly regarded two of fire as hell. You can even get him back in there against Chael as much as Chael likes to talk. Let let, let, him, let him fight Mo, you know get get him in there get 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 hit, get Mo his his. Uh, his light heavyweight title shot, regardless uh, of who it winds up being at that point in time. I'm just saying, it, at least in my my eyes, it, it must be the swarm next. Yeah, you never know why matchmakers make the matches they do, but you got to just hope that they're going to produce some good fights either way, you know? Yeah, definitely cannot always count on matchmaking to uh, – <laughs> to do what's right, you sometimes the uh, yeah. the the, fa- the, the fans mm-hmm. kind of need to speak up. Like, hey, hey, hey! You're like, 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 yes, the, the, this guy is definitely one of the guys that's coming up. You should be in the conversation, but yeah, you don't don't overlook this guy that's paid his dues, and that's kind of uh, a lot of what we're seeing in MMA, regardless if we're if we're talking about the the UFC or if we're talking about you know you know regional promotion, Bellator, whatever. You still need to see you know. The the like we were talking about before you got on there. Is, there's nothing wrong with having some fun fights every once in a while, yeah. but don't do it to the point where you're holding the vision up and holding people's careers up just because you want to make X matchup. Yeah, you got to think about other people that are you know sitting there waiting. Like Greg, where's my shot? Where's my shot? But you know, unfortunately, especially lately, MMA has turned to more of a popular thing. You know, it's not so much about who deserves it, it's more about who does everybody else want to see fight, you know, so it's, it's, I feel like MMA is kind of in a, in a weird transition, you know, of becoming like a really popular sport, but also staying true to the roots of just fighting, so it's a little weird time. Uh, we got some interesting comments about King Mo in the chat room. <laughs> got to see my boy Justin going off. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> all right, we, we, we all got uh, we all got people who support us. We also have the same people who hate us. But make sure your haters are, are your motivators too. Don't let them don't let them stop with you from what you're doing. And speaking of which, you know, yeah. seeing what's going on in the featherweight division, you know, you know. Uh, I, I didn't see any any news on who who or what or, or when uh, any news on on when you're getting back in there. I'm waiting, you know. I'm patiently waiting. Um, I did kind of uh, with me moving over to Bellator. I kind of knew I was going to be on the shelf a little bit longer with the move, but it's totally going to be worth it in the end. And I'm hoping within. The next couple weeks I'll have some news. I keep hearing that there's some news coming up, but I just got to wait, you know, and got to wait it out. But I promise this, when my fight does come, nobody's going to want to miss it. Nobody. I'm so ready to get back in there. I've been training so hard, and I feel like the best fighter I've ever felt. So I'm excited to showcase everything that I've been working so hard for. For everyone who doesn't know, that's key word that she knows that she just can't announce it yet, just so everyone knows. <laughs> hey, Carrie, you can cut me off, too. It's not, it's not just one way. You can cut me off, too. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to cut anybody. <laughs> I'm really excited for you. I cannot wait to see your fight uh, in Bellator. Thank that's you. really, really, really awesome. And, it, I mean, it, like you said, Invicta is an absolute – a uh, great organization, and they have you know some really really talented fighters, but and 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 they really do. But you know, like going to a bigger organization like Bellator is just it really is phenomenal. That's awesome. 
Yeah, I mean, at at a certain point in time, you got to make a decision for yourself in your career, you know, and that that was it for me, you know, that was the the next move in my career to really help me kind of jumpstart it and get get out there and start fighting. It's just about fighting for me. I'd fight even if they weren't paying me for it. So for me to not be fighting and to be on the shelf for so long, it, it's challenging for me because all I want to do is fight. I can imagine. I can imagine that. It must be a, a little frustrating, you know, to sit there and, you know, watch it all and not, not be in there yet. But like you said, it must make you really super hungry, you know, to get back in there and, and amped up. So I can't imagine uh, you're going to be you're going to be on fire. Yeah, yeah, the motivation definitely takes your motivation to another level when you just sit back, especially with everything that's been happening with Chris Cyborg, Megan Anderson, and the UFC. So to just sit back and kind of watch it all play out in front of your eyes, yeah, I just want to get in there. You know, I want to be a part of the mix, and I can only do that when I start fighting again. Very true. Yeah. It's one of the things, like, you look at, at, at how everything's moving around. It's just kind of a weird situation where, you know, you know, uh, you know everyone was, is, throw, is throwing all their speculations into, you know, you know why, why Megan was pulled from the fight. But at the same time, we're all kind of forgetting that, that I think, uh, you know, at least from my point of view, we're getting a better matchup. Nothing against, against, against Megan whatsoever. She's... You know, legit uh, I dis- a, 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 I disagree. a star featherweight, but don't take that away from 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 Tanya. She's she's far earned this shot at least a good three years ago. Not and the fact not that we're, we're finally good. Not against Cyborg, and I strongly disagree. Not against Cyborg. Does she deserve her shot in the UFC at a bantamweight? At her at her like weight class? Her, yeah, her natural weight. She yeah. Did. Her natural weight. She's a veteran of the sport. UFC should have gave her a shot in the bantamweight division a long, long time ago. Now, Cyborg mm-hmm. is a completely different animal who is extremely big. She is a very big person. And I, I just think the don't other think thing people forget method. about is how fast she is, too. That's the thing I think people yeah. really don't really give Cyborg credit for. Is her, her speed is what, is what sets her apart from every. Yes, very, very. She, um, she is. She is probably one of the most athletic 145ers, and that's exactly what sets her apart from everybody else is her athleticism, her strength, her size, and how good of an athlete she is. I don't think Tanya Evinger is ready for what Cyborg is going to bring to her, and I think Megan Anderson was a way better matchup for Cyborg than Tanya Evinger. Do I believe Tanya deserves that shot? Yeah, of course. You know, she wants to test herself. Go ahead. But – I don't think that's that's a better fight than Cyborg and Megan. I just don't. I think Cyborg well, you, and Megan. Well, you've been, you've been in there. With, you've been in there with Megan, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give that one to you. I respectfully disagree. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I definitely do agree with you that that it definitely should have been bantamweight, but at the same time, with seeing how everything's going, to not take 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 it regardless of 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 you know weight class or who it was. Take the opportunity that was given, that, that 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 you were given. Yeah, it, you know, it's probably going to be w- one of those situations where know. you know may not may not be her best night, but at the same day, your foot's in the door, and you know, there's you know, I'm pretty sure that conversations were had of uh, she'll probably uh, get the fight, whatever fight she wants uh, at bantamweight next. Yeah, you don't know that though. The UFC does it. Might yeah, not be you're right. The deal. We don't know that because so they might turn know. around and, and send her right back to Invicta. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I think that when Megan backed out, they should have gave that Russian or I don't know where she's from. The girl that was supposed to fight Tanya was supposed to fight Megan, then Tanya, and now she's fighting Pam Thorson. I think they should have gave her a shot because she's a natural 145er and she's eight and zero with a few knockouts on her record. I think that they should have gave her a shot, but they did what they it did. It goes so back. It goes right back to what I, what I was saying, though. Like how there's so many talented featherweights out there that just people don't really know much about them, and because they're not being yeah. pushed by some of these other promotions, that people mm-hmm. have this misconception that there are no that, that that like you know women's featherweights are like Sasquatch. You just can't find them. You guys are freaking nah. Insane. We're ev- we're everywhere. <laughs> 
and, and another think, person and I, I, I would I would have had on that short list would have been um um you know uh, my 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 friend Big Bird there Miss uh, Miss uh, Miss Brittany Elkin is another one I I think that that is coming upon the, the opportunity to start being able to get in, into these bigger shows for for more people to pay attention to what she's doing. Yeah. I mean, she's now a Bellator, so, you know, yep, maybe she'll yeah, be making yep. help, too. Yeah, yep. Uh, if, if they put you two, I swear to God, I swear to God, if they match you two up next, I'm going to freaking punch a wall. Because it's going to be like the fifth no. time this year that, that, that two people who I've literally watched kind of go up the tree <laughs> have to go f- fight each other again. So it's going to be like, oh, man, I mean, here I go again. I mean, it's. Uh, it's probably coming. It's probably coming in the near future. I'm not the girl oh, she's fighting on the 14th, though. Yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, it's it will probably happen one day. It's gonna happen. Uh, I don't think yeah. there's there, there's a way that you make it through the next calendar year without you two getting matched up. I mean, my hope is I face everybody eventually. You know. That's what I'm looking forward to, and I think that's what Bellator is giving featherweights is the opportunity to have more featherweights to fight. You know, you go over there, you look at their roster, you're like, wow, I've never fought her, I've never fought her, I can fight her. Oh, man, that's a great matchup. And so I just, I'm really excited to be part of Bellator. Now, as you start moving along and, and you know, now that you, you're you there at that the, the big gym with the uh, a lot more, a lot more women fighters to put to to help push you, and with some girls that have particular uh, uh, Muay Thai backgrounds, is uh, is some of these kickboxing shows something that you're going to look into having some fun with moving forward? Always, you know, if if the right opportunity came along and they wanted me to do a a Muay Thai kickboxing fight, like I'm always open for it. But right now, my main focus is MMA. And I wouldn't want to do anything that deters me from that. So as I'm waiting, I've got a few jujitsu competitions lined up, but I'm always open for anything as long as it doesn't take away from my path on MMA. Because me oh, answering uh, Bellator, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just I'm, saying about like you know, uh, in between in, in between fights to kind of uh, kind of kind of keep busy. You know, you know maybe you're, you're waiting yeah. for oh, yeah. you know uh, you know like like how, how we're just saying we're you know. You got signed first, and somehow, you know, Brittany's fighting before you. Just like one of those, yeah. say, you know, moving forward, you guys run into another one of those situations where you're waiting for another matchup to kind of take place so you can either take the winner or loser of that fight, and they have a, an opportunity where you can kickbox to kind of uh, kind of keep you busy is kind of what I was kind of yeah. saying, not to kind of take away from your MMA training or, or what you do uh, as far as working on your jiu-jitsu either. Hey. You know, you're starting to see a lot more fighters, uh, you know, do the uh, the the uh, jujitsu super fights because there's a whole lot more opportunities out there now than there was even five years ago. Yeah, I mean, I'm always open to fight, I, you know, and I want to test myself in all areas of fighting. So if the right thing pops up for Muay Thai or kickboxing, I'd be all for it. And yeah, I think that's huge, you know, why. You- while you have a big break, okay. you know, while you're like, like, like Stephen was saying, when you have a big break like that, you know, staying active and something. That's why I like that the jujitsu tournaments and all that stuff because there's, you know, there's always something going on where you can, you know, get your hand into something. And I'm sure, you know, like you said, with all the women you train with, that's probably just a huge help in sparring all the time too and staying active. Yeah. Yeah. No. Of course. And you know, having all this time off. Um, all I've really had is time to just train and get better, train and get better, train and get better. So a lot of people are like, oh, you know, what about ring rest? How does it feel to, you know, kind of just be out and not fighting? To me, I feel like I've been in fight camp for the last year just waiting, you know, staying ready, waiting, staying ready, waiting, staying Mm -hmm. ready, waiting. So I'm just ready to go. Now, one last thing I want to I want to throw you good kind of go back to Chris's thing. We know like the okay. you know Dana's come out this week and said he he's kind of uh, hit into the situation where he he felt that they've done wrong by Chris. They have to actively go out there and and, and do something right by her. You know they made the the, the fight with Tanya happen, but I think mm-hmm. a lot of people are still forgetting that uh, Chris has a major major coin in her pocket that the fact that her contract is up. By October, 
and fight wise yeah. it would be done it would be done after this this fight with Tanya. So here's the thing. I wouldn't be surprised if Scott Coker throws out uh, uh, an insane deal that might be hard for, for the UFC to kind of match. And, uh, you know, if if you were a betting person, would you bet that she would stay with the UFC? Or yeah. would you bet that she, uh, she mean, might come to the dark side and follow you guys over to Bellator? I mean, I, w- I would hope that she would come over to Bellator, you know. Um, but I don't think the UFC would let her go. I don't think the UFC would... I think the UFC will pretty much put whatever number they need to on the table to keep her because she's a draw. And she pulls in a lot of numbers, and a lot of people know who she is. And I don't think the UFC is willing to lose people like that right now. I think that their main focus is keeping people that have numbers, no matter how good or bad or whatever they are. He just They just want to keep people who draw in people, and I don't think they'd let Cyborg go like that. But I hope that she does come to Bellator because that's my challenge right there, you know. Everybody in the featherweight <laughs> division that has stayed in the featherweight division knows that Cyborg's the pinnacle. That's your you uniform. Be the that, that's what you're chasing. That's, that's your uniform. <laughs> yeah, that's the one right there. You beat her, you're the best in the world. It's one of the things that I kind of feel, you know, you hit it on the head that, that – there are a lot of girls that were at featherweight that had, you know, moved up, moved down, moved around to kind of try to avoid that fight. But ultimately, you know, some, most of them wind up coming back. Um, but, you know, at the same time, if, if you're truly, you know, you truly do love this sport at the end of the day, you're not running from that girl. That's the girl you want to fight. And if you don't fight her, you feel that you've lost something, that something was stolen from you. If you don't feel that way, you're yeah. never you're, – at least, at least the way I look at it is that you know you, you're really your heart's really not in that division. That's no, like that's, that's exactly like a guy that that's and, well. Look how Daniel Cormier feels right now. He still feels like he is not a champion until he beats John Jones, regardless of that belt's around his waist or not. That's what I mean about hey, about know, knowing who about knowing that I, I am not the best two hundred five until I beat that guy. Yeah. That that's it. That's just like in the one twenty five division. You're not the best till you beat DJ. In the featherweight women's division, you cannot call yourself the best in the world till you beat Cyborg. And if you're not chasing that, um, you know, whether she'll retire before a newcomer actually gets there or whatever, if you're not chasing that, if you're not chasing her, then then you're not really in this division. You're not trying to help this division grow. You're only trying to help yourself grow, which I get because fighting is a selfish sport. But as featherweights, I think we all need to kind of help the division grow. And chasing Cyborg and having that goal in mind and staying in the featherweight division and going for her is what's going to help us. Now here here's here's one uh, I see I've seen it out there, and and this is what I'm gonna what I'm gonna propose to you as we get ready to wrap it up. Um, okay. With as crazy as, as things are, with you know fighters being all over the place, and you know, we, we always have these discussions where we're trying to say who, who's the best fighter in this this weight class, et cetera. We always that that's why you've had this whole pound per pound list br- brought up. Wouldn't it be like how you know we used to see back in Japan on 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 New Year's Eve they would always have the one night tournaments at whatever weight class, and you know it would be the, the biggest thing. Wouldn't yeah. it, I don't think it would be a crazy idea for multiple promotions to kind of get together and do a one night Grand Prix. I talk about and, yeah, and kind of going back to going back to the the, the old days where you know you know <laughs> the Grand Prix were probably more coveted than the actual titles just because of the fact that a you know you know you're having the fight multiple times on one night. Yes, it would probably be a um. A ni- nightmare as far as sanctioning goes. That's why probably you, why you would do it overseas. <laughs> but I mean, I, yeah. I just think it's something that as this sport kind of grows, it's ca- kind of lost some things along the way. And I believe the 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 Valley Two O tournament, the one night tournament, is something that should be brought back sparingly, once a year, once every few years, to kind of really and for multiple promotions to see who really are. The best. We don't have to worry about rankings or anything for at least one night. 
Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that that would make everything a lot funner, too, and it would really show people where they're at. It's like Invicta, Bellator, and the UFC all let the featherweights fight it out for a tournament. Like, that would be crazy, and that would really show you, like, who, who the best in the world is. But I doubt that it will ever happen again. But it's a good yeah, idea. I doubt I it will, too. Right now we're, we're, we're just talking crazy talk, but at the same time, yeah. it's not crazy talk, at least not to us. <laughs> You know, no, that would be a perfect, honestly one of the coolest things ever. Yeah, in a perfect world, things would work out that way. But in the real world. Yeah, yeah. in the real world, we have to come back to reality and and and, uh, yeah. and, and, uh. and put our dreams aside. But, I mean, and, and you know, we're, t- we we're talking about unicorns and stuff like that, talking about, like, like things that, that, you know, mean mean the most to you. Looking at at women's MMA as it is now, and kind of look looking some of the things that we missed. Do you think that uh, that everyone will still like ten years from now we'll, we'll talk about how we never got to see uh, R- Rousey versus Cyborg, or because of you know how Ronda's kind of left the sport as it is now that you know it's kind of one of the things where you'll see fans be like, you know what, I'm actually glad that that one didn't happen. Uh, I mean, I think, like, all the old school fans in 10 years from now will, like, really want that. But I think Ronda's lost all her juice to fighting, and I don't think anyone's really interested in seeing her match up with anybody because she's no longer. Well, I don't want to no see her match up with anything right now. I, 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 I think I, I agree with you. I don't think, I, I don't think it, it was that, that she didn't really have it in there. I just think that she's been competing at a high level for so long. you got to remember how long was she competing to be – you know uh, uh, the, the 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 best you know um, American Judica that 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 anyone has ever seen, and then you know yeah. I think she only took like a year year and a half off from the time that she she won to the time she started training them in May again, and then had you know that that you know you know f- you know four or five year run and you know that she's you know you got to think that she's basically competing a good twenty years of of her life. It's you know. If you don't give yourself downtime in between that, you you're definitely gonna get burned out. And then especially with how big she blew up from the time the time that she got the strike force to the time she got to the UFC is unheard of in in any 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 part of our sport. Well, yeah, and as you start to get popular, goals change, right? So she wanted to be the best in the world. She proved she was the best in the world multiple times. Like even now, even though she was beat twice, she still to me one of the best in the world. I've never seen anybody hold their title that long or dominate or do what she did. But as she got more popular, I personally think her goals changed. So fighting and competing was no longer top priority. Movies and acting and and venturing off into something else, I think that became top priority. And if you're not 100% in fighting, mentally, physically, everything, you're just not going to – it's just not going to work out for you because there's somebody else before you who's 100% in it. So if your goals aren't – fighting related like your top goal isn't fighting related and you want to do something else like movies or whatever you should probably just hang it up and and venture off and do that or else you know bad losses happen and obviously you know what happened to her is it's sad it's hard to watch but it is what it is it's, this is the, the game you know and I'm, I'm really glad that you said that because I get really I get really mad <laughs> I get really mad with people like Oh, she's you know this and that, and she was a one. Like, she was far from a one-trick pony, and I've still yet to see any female. The only person that's coming a close second to that is Joanna Ojechak, who will, you know, uh, <clears throat> she'll beat Ronda Rousey's record without a question. But um, yeah. Ronda Rousey still is, and 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 in any other division, she's still the only champion to defend that belt as long as she did, and in such dominant fashion that those two losses should not at all overshadow uh, any of her other wins because the people are like, oh, she fought people, you know, when it was in its infancy. I'm like, ah, uh, I think that's a really inaccurate statement because, you know, you're then forgetting about Strike Force and, you know, uh, all, you know, all the other women that came up. And it's just like, I, th- I think people just forget about all that stuff. And, you know, you get new fans that don't realize it. And it, it really does. It kind of gets on my nerves. But, like, you know, that's, it is what it is, and, you know, I really – I don't think she should really fight again either because, you know what, like like you said, her heart's not in it. She's she's happy acting, and, you know, I think that uh, the modeling thing might have gotten with, you know, like Sports Illustrated and stuff, and good for her. You know, she – like you said, she proved she was the best in the world. She's – you know, she had multiple records that she broke, and she just – she's great. 
Yeah. Here's I the mean, thing. When, when anyone, if right anyone here. ever comes to you with that emphasis statement ever again, Carrie, just simply say elite <laughs> ex. If you can't tell me, tell me who, uh, uh, what, who, who that promotion was and all that good stuff. That you know, you know, when, when, when women were, were only were, when they were only allowed to fight three minute rounds, then you then then they can come talk to me about it. Uh, yeah, people yeah. people don't get it. People don't. They don't. Uh, and that's people that only follow it since the UFC became, you know, so as popular as it did. Yeah. All right. Well, as uh, I'm looking at the time here, it's time to uh, wrap everything up with uh, with Amber. Amber, you know how we do do things. Throw the proverbial microphone over to you. Anyone you would like to thank, training partners, teammates, shoot out your social media sites, any sponsors you might have, charities you work with, anything you want to say at all. The time is yours, my friend. Yeah, first, thank you guys for having me on. It's always a pleasure. Um, I want to thank all my teammates at Darcy O'Leary Jiu-Jitsu, all of my teammates and coaches at CSA, um, and, you know, uh, my sensei at Darcy O'Leary Jiu-Jitsu as well. Um, and then, of course, I want to thank my sponsors, Fightletics, Tyra Sports USA, 5150, um, GFY, Lana Agui, Grip Mouth Guards, I always feel like I'm forgetting one. Oh, uh, MAL, Martial, uh, Martial Arts Life. Um, I'm sure there's probably one or two I'm always forgetting. But um, thank you to all my sponsors and everyone that's listening tonight. Thank you. Oh, it's always a pleasure, Amber. Let, let, you got to let us know uh, when uh, when you get the uh, get the fight so we can, uh, you know, come back on and talk again. You know, great to Definitely. hear, you know. You got a, you know, you, you're uh, you're at a quality camp now. You got a, you got a promotion that really wants to promote that uh, that, that division behind you. You know, you know, I think that I think you'll do great in, in Bellator, and uh, you know, looking forward to what the future holds for you, my friend. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me on again.